اجمعین What makes a Sahabi? Who is a Sahabi? A companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we refer to as Sahabi in the Arabic language. Sahabi is derived from the root word which means companionship Suhbatun, to be in the company of someone. Like companion means companionship, companionship likewise, Sahabi also refers to the Suhba, the company of someone that he acquires. A Sahabi is not someone who physically saw the Prophet ﷺ with his eyes. A Sahabi is not someone who physically saw the Prophet ﷺ with his eyes. Because we have some Sahaba who were visually impaired and blind, who were Sahaba but never saw the Prophet ﷺ. So the definition of a Sahabi is man laqiyya nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mu'minan wa mata ala al-eeman. Whoever met with the Prophet ﷺ in the state of Iman and passed away in the state of, of Iman, he is a companion, he is a Sahabi. So the company of the Prophet ﷺ and the meeting of the Prophet ﷺ is what makes a Sahabi a Sahabi. So it is not the person seeing the Prophet, but it's in fact the Prophet seeing the person which makes him the Sahabi. It is the Prophet ﷺ looking at someone which makes them a Sahabi. And this companionship, this suhba, for some of them it was only half a day. They still became a Sahabi. For example, Mukhairiq, who was one of the great scholars of the Jews in Medina, on the day of the battle of Uhud, when the Prophet ﷺ went out into the battlefield, Asking the Jews to come out. On that day, it was a Saturday. It was the day of Sabbath. And Mukhairiq, he came out from the Jewish people's quarters. And he said, La Sabbat al yawm Today is not Sabbath. Then he joined the Prophet ﷺ in the battlefield. And Mukhairiq became a companion of the Prophet ﷺ on that very day. And he was martyred in the very same battle. Just a few moments in the company of the Prophet ﷺ still makes a person a Sahabi. And a Sahabi reaches a rank even in those few moments he spends with the Prophet ﷺ, a rank no other person, Qutub, Ghothar, Abdal after him can reach. Even if he spends that few moments in the company of the Prophet ﷺ, like Mukhairiq only half a day. We have another Sahabi, Abdullah al-Bajali, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who accepted Islam only 40 days before the Prophet ﷺ passed away. But he became a Sahabi and no one after him can reach his status because he is a Sahabi. He spent time with the Prophet ﷺ. Now I want you to imagine, if someone spends a few moments 
in the company of the beloved Prophet ﷺ, and therefore becomes a Sahabi and reaches a rank that no one can reach, then what do you think about the maqam of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who spent his youth with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa before the bi'tha of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa after the bi'tha he spent 13 years hadar and safar in, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and 10 years of his life he spent in Medina with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whether Rasulullah was at home, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq is with him. If Rasulullah is in a journey, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq is with him. If Rasulullah is in a battle, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq is with him. And today he rests beside Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the suhbah of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. If a few moments in the company of Rasulullah makes someone a sahabi who was better than every ghost and qutub and abdal after him, then think about the maqam of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, who spent time with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like no other sahabi. This is why he is the best of companions. He spent the most time with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had the best companionship with the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said according to the narration of Tirmidhi on the authority of Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, anta sahibi ala al-hawdi wa sahibi fi al-ghar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself said to Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, you are my companion in the cave, and you are my companion, you will be my companion on the Hawza Qasr on the Day of Judgment. This is the kind of companionship Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu had. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umar, according to the narration of a tirmidhi he mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once came into the masjid in Nabawi. He had Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq in his right hand, holding the hand of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Imagine, that time when Rasulullah is walking into the masjid with Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq in his, on his right holding his hand. And Sayyiduna Umar al-Faruq radiallahu anhu standing on the left of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is holding his hand in his left and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ha katha nub'athu yawm al-qiyamah. This is how I, Abu Bakr and Umar, we will be holding our hands on the Day of Judgment. Even on the Day of Judgment, the companionship of Rasul with of Rasulullah of Abu Bakr as Siddiq with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be so immense with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And actually the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to another narration, Abdullah ibn Hantab radiallahu anhu mentions according to the narration of At-Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, هَذَانِ السَّمْعُ وَالْبَصَرُ Abu Bakr and Umar, they are my eyes and they are my ears. Referring to them, the eye, this is how close they were in their suhbah, in their companionship with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now think about Mukhairiq radiallahu anhu, who only spent half a day with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and passed away. He became a sahabi. Think about Abdullah al-Bajali, spent 40, only 40 days in the companionship of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, still became a sahabi and reached a rank that no other person can reach. But think about the ranks of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Sayyidina Umar al-Faruq radiallahu anhu. They spend their lives with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of their time with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So close to him that an eye, look at how close the eye is to you and how important it is to you. And look at how close the ear is to you, and how important it is to you. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, that on the earth I have two wazirs. One wazir is Abu Bakr, and the other is Umar. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, he passed away on the 22nd of Jamadul Akhirah. We are in the month on the day of his demise. This is why I want to speak about the life of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, his jazba thuneki, his yearning for doing good deeds was amazing. Other sahaba used to compete with him doing good deeds. But he never used to compete with them. Naturally, he always done good deeds before everybody else. It was natural. He didn't have to try hard. 
It is from the fitrah of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, from the taba of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, from the intrinsic nature of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu to hasten and rush in doing good deeds. And the other sahaba used to chase up behind him. This is why Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu amir al-mu'mineen radiallahu anhu wa karram allahu wa chahu al-kareem he called Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq as-sabbaq. As-sabbaq, the one who always is first in doing good deeds. The one who is always first in doing good deeds. If we look at the life of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he is the first male man to accept Islam. And the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in the narration, the iman of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu is weightier than the iman of all believers. The iman of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq is heavier than the iman of all other believers. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu is the face first, Muslim male to accept Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a prophet and accept his message. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu is that Muslim, the first da'iya of Islam, the first preacher of Islam, the first ambassador of Islam, the first man to make tabligh and da'wah of Islam. This is also the virtue of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Do you know we have the ten sahaba who are promised paradise, Ashara Mubashara. Out of them, five of them, five of the Sahaba who were promised Jannah by the Prophet ﷺ in this dunya, five of them were brought to Islam on the hands of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Abu Ubaidah al Jarrah, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, Abdurrahman ibn, Abi, uh, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, and Uthman ibn Affan. These all accepted Islam on the hands of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. And these are from those who were promised paradise by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He always rushed in doing good deeds. One morning, according to some narrations, this happened after Fajr. According to other narrations, it was later on in the day. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting in the masjid. And he was addressing the Sahaba, his companions. And he began asking them, is there anyone who is fasting today? Everybody is silent. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq speaks up, yes, Ya Rasulullah, I am fasting. Then the Prophet wasallam asks the congregation of the Sahaba, is there anyone who followed a janazah today? Everybody is silent. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu speaks up, Ya Rasulullah, I followed a janazah today. The Prophet ﷺ asks, is there anybody who gave sadaqah today? Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu again says, Ya Rasulullah, I gave sadaqah today. The Prophet ﷺ says, said, is there anyone who visited someone sick today? An ill person? Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu again spoke up, Ya Rasulullah, I have visited a sick person today. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever gathers all of these good deeds, he shall go, surely go to Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look at Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq doing all these good deeds and the other Sahaba are looking at him. And if the narration of Fajr, if he done this after Fajr, it's quite amazing. If Rasulullah sallallahu was asking them after Fajr, that means that before he came to the Fajr prayer, he done all of these things, according to one of the narrations. And the other Sahaba are thinking, Ya Rasulullah, we've only just started the day. But Abu Bakr as-Siddiq has already done these good deeds. In the battle of Tabuk, it was very hot. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa took an army of 30,000 soldiers. The largest army Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ever prayed, prepared in his life. 30,000 soldiers Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa takes to Tabuk. And for that he calls the Sahaba asking them to give their wealth, give their goods in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he can prepare the army. This is a very famous story. Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq radiallahu anhu in his heart, he thought, yes, today I'm going to compete with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. And I'm going to bring more wealth and more property to the feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in preparation for the Muslim army than Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So what does Hazrat Umar al-Farooq do? He goes back home, he divides his belongings into half, he leaves half for his family and brings half to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He presents them. But he sees that Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu had brought all of his belongings to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he realized that I could not compete with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu in doing good deeds. 
He brought half, Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq brought all of his wealth to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Oh Abu Bakr, what did you leave for your children, your family, your wife? What did Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq say? Abqaytullah wa Rasulah. O Messenger of Allah, I have left you and Allah in my home. The point I want you to think about today, we say, I wish I was in the time of the Prophet. I wish I was with the Prophet. I wish I spent time with the Prophet ﷺ. But I want you to seriously think. It's easy to say that. It's easy to have that yearning. But if you were in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and Rasulullah ﷺ asked you to bring all of your wealth, could you do it? Our attach, we would think, Oh Rasulullah, I've saved up all this money for my children's education. What am I going to leave with my wife? What am I going to leave with my family? We would think twice, three times, four times. But look at the sacrifice of the Sahaba. And in particular, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Today we find it difficult giving a hundred pounds to the masjid or fifty pounds to a good cause. Imagine giving all of our wealth or half of our belongings to the Prophet Wasallam. So it was difficult living around, for us to live around the Prophet Wasallam Because we are weak. But look at the Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een. When Abu Bakr al-Siddiq brought his wealth, he said, I have left Allah and his messenger in my home. Having no fear of any loss. And for this passion he had, for this service and khidmat of Islam, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he was given a ridwan al-akbar. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, what is a ridwan al-akbar? The greatest pleasure, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the greatest pleasure will be given to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And what is it? On the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal himself to all humanity, and all Muslims will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their naked eye. The pleasure of seeing Allah on the Day of Judgment is greater than the pleasure of entering Jannah. We aspire to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our aspiration to enter Jannah should be after that. The greatest joy that the Ahl Iman will have on the Day of Judgment is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the Day of Judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal Himself for all Muslims, then the second time He will reveal Himself only for Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. This is a Ridwan al-Akbar. This is the pleasure he has. And the Quran mentions, وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا الْأَتْقَى أَلَّذِي يُتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq has been referred to as, as al-Atqa in al-Quran al-Kareem by ijma' of all of the Ahl al-Sunnah mufassirun. Imam al-Razi in Tafsir al-Kabir, Ibn al-Jawzi in Zad al-Masir. They mention all of the Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'a mufassirun. They say al-Atqa here in the meaning of Af'al al-Tafdeel that Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu is the most God-fearing companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This ayah is referring to Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that soon he shall kept very far away from hellfire. The Quran is referring to how Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq is kept very far from hellfire. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Anta atiqum min nar O Abu Bakr, you are saved from hellfire. And this is one of the titles of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, Atiq. He is saved from the hellfire. Ma wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.